So last night, in the late in the evening, I was thinking about some of the things I did during the day, including working on this radio, and it just suddenly struck me I put the wrong size resistor in the uh, in the set. <laughs> Isn't that something, eh? So I put this in. This is a 50k resistor, and it really should have been a 500k resistor, which I've now put in here. So, uh, hmm. That may be why the transformer was getting uh, a little hot. Um, I think this was the uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know what? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'll take all that back. But anyway, I have the correct size resistor in here now. So I can feel a little better about that. Okay, so that's that one changed back to... 0. 0.0025. Okay, so it might be a little hard to see, but I've replaced the capacitor right down in, in here. Okay, and uh, on the schematic, that looks like. Hang on one second here. This one here. This 220 that runs between the cathode and the plate 220 uh, picofarad capacitor and we're going to give it a test so I have it on the tester already clipped in here get this just a little bit better Okay, so watching the eye here, 25 volts, fine, 150, fine, 250, perfect, 350, look at that, maybe it wasn't connected here, let's, let's double check. Fifty volts. That's what it is. So zero leakage through this capacitor. So uh, it's in good condition. How surprising is that? Well, if it's not leaking, well, I've got long leads here. I can't really measure a very small capacitance here unless I. I can get it. To, I don't think I can do this. So let's just check it though. Connect it right into the terminals. Not really. The leads are just a little bit too short here. Yeah, I just got a small shock. So I'm wearing shorts, and my knee just bumped up against the oscilloscope below me here. And there must be a, a capacitor uh, tying the frame of this device uh, back to the power supply. And I just got a tiny little tickle there. Keeps me always mindful. Okay. Next capacitor. Okay, so that's the 180 changed there. We'll take a look on the schematic. And the 180 is this one right here. You can see it's connected to one of the transformers and then down to this 22k resistor which incidentally I checked uh, the value of this it's exactly 22k so um, so that's the guy at 180 now another observation here might be worth just taking a peek at it this is the first of these capacitors I examine the shell on it seems to be completely intact the one I just took out, which we can look at over here, this one here, has a, uh, has a crack in the shell, very visible crack in the shell. 
swore I saw a crack in this guy. <laughs> right in here, I think. Maybe under a little better lighting. You might see it, so... If it didn't come across on camera. Here we go. Ready for the test. 25 volts. That's good. 150, good. No leakage. No leakage in this one either. You wouldn't even know there's a capacitor connected. Good. Okay, so the uh, capacitor I've changed out is this one here. That's a 56 uh, picofarad capacitor on the schematic. That's this one right here. Okay. Is ready to be tested. Here we go. 25 volts. Perfectly good. 50 perfectly good. Look at this. All test. No leakage on these capacitors. Okay. Onward. Okay, so we've done three of these. Uh, black capacitors, they've all checked out just fine. There's three more tucked up in the band switch here. One in behind there, one here, and one under here. They're all difficult to make replacements on, especially the one down here. So, considering what I found so far, all these capacitors are testing fine. I really have no reason to suspect that these ones are bad. So, I went ahead and I checked all the resistors here just in circuit and uh, they all check out fine except for this one here this one's about double its value it's supposed to be uh, 470 uh, K 470,000 ohms and it's up around 750,000 so I'm gonna change this one and you know maybe because I soldered to the end of it here and you can see how there's no clearance there's no lead wire to where it's soldered Maybe I cook this. So I'm going to cook this one. I cooked the other one that I changed here. Maybe that's one of the rules here when you're dealing with these old radios. Uh, if you heat one of these old resistors, you may be ending its life. If you don't heat it, and it doesn't heat because of its own operation, maybe it, uh, it, it lasts a lot, lot, lot longer. That's three lots, by the way. So that's what I'm going to change out now. I'm going to leave those capacitors, the other ones, uh, as they are. Okay, so there's the new guy in there. Oh, wait a minute. It's supposed to be, yeah, 470, what am I thinking? It's a 500 I put in. Duh. I'm looking for the colors for 470K. I put a 500K in there. Okay, and here's the reading from the old resistor. There's the resistor, you can see. And my leads, and there's the reading. That should be 0 0.470. So definitely gone high. And again, it could have been from my previous soldering operation. I may have done it. And what impact that has on the operation of the radio, I'm not sure. So the next stage for this radio now is back in the Okay, camera. so let's let's give this a test in my shop here. Uh, there we go. Okay, I put two new light bulbs in it here. A little bit hard to see in the shop lighting. We're on 
on the A band. Good. Okay, it's working. So, next thing will be a proper test on a proper antenna. And maybe it'll face up to a challenge from the Hammerland SP600. We'll see. So thanks for watching uh, so far.